Hi, my name's Colin, and this is the Action Figure Resource Video Channel. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at Wave 2 of Spider-Man, the new animated series, released in 1994. Don't forget to watch the video to the end in order to get your free, downloadable Spider-Man action figure checklist. Before we get into today's video, don't forget to subscribe below, click the bell icon in order to be informed of all my future videos, and smash the like button. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get on with today's video. Resource.com. Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures. Wave 2 of Spider Man, the new animated series, came with seven figures. There was Spider Man with web parachute action, Peter Parker with camera accessory, Alien Spider Slayer with twin torso pincers, Kingpin with grab and smash action, Craven with spear throwing action, the lizard with a lashing tail action, and last vulture with spreading wing action. The first figure is the web parachute Spider-Man. The web parachute Spider-Man used the standard Spider-Man mold that was used in many different ways. Attached to his back, he had a folded parachute. But when you tossed the figure into the air, on descending, the parachute would open up and Spider-Man would float down to the ground. The second figure is Peter Parker. Peter Parker was one of the rarer figures in this series. However, it was quite a plain figure and the only accessory he came with was his camera. The molding was good and had a very good likeness to Peter Parker in the animated series. The only difference was his outfit was quite different to the outfit he wore in the cartoon series. The figure also came with nicely sculpted and removable camera accessory hanging over his neck and arms and single jointed elbows swivel waist and bendable knee. The next figure is the Alien Spider Slayer. The Alien Spider Slayer was a robot spider slayer from the outer stratosphere. This was a very cool looking dude to add to your collection. The figure features strong articulation with snarling jaws and spider pins. The character was only in the comic series, but was never featured on the TV show. It was a fierce looking character, painted all gray and intricately detailed with his cool pincers popping out from the center of his torso. The action feature on this figure was that when his knees were pushed together, the pincers would snap open and close. The alien Spider-Man had movement at his neck, shoulders, elbow, legs, and bendable knees. His legs also had a kicking motion. It also had some articulation on his tail. The next figure is Kingpin. Kingpin was a very heavy set figure with a massive torso that was quite befitting the formidable villain Wilson Fisk. Unfortunately, due to his bulky frame, Kingpin had very limited articulation in his neck and arm. He wasn't a very popular toy, probably because he was quite plain. Although Kingpin was an important character in the show, so he was an important addition to the line despite this. He had a simple, neat paint job with nice little details, but accessories Kingpin came with a black cane with a diamond on the top. Like Craven, Kingpin's play featured him lifting his arms and dropping a blow with his cane. Okay, so next we have Craven. 
This was the first and only time that Craven was featured in the Toy Biz Spider-Man line. Later versions were only repainted versions of this figure. It features a very good likeness of the animated series character, and he had spring-loaded arm for throwing spears. Clearly, a lot of thought was put into the details of this figure, with a well-sculpted mane and perfect eyes. He had eight points of articulation in the neck, shoulders, elbows, with bendable knees and also a kick movement. Okay, moving on, we come to Lizard. This was the first attempt of Lizard that Toy Biz made, and as a result, wasn't one of the best. Like in the initial Gambit figure, the Lizard was dressed in a plastic lab coat, but the likeness wasn't quite right with the animated character. Toy Biz also launched a variation figure of the Lizard dressed in a red shirt. The Lizard came with a long, bendy lashing tail like his signature move in the cartoon series. The figure had articulation on its neck, arms with single jointed elbows and legs that could kick out and bendable knees. Next is the Vulture. The Vulture is a hard figure to find but had a spot on look of the character from the show. It was a really cool design with a very good, awesome paint job. True to his name, the Vulture had wings attached to the figure's body. The wings were detachable from the arms and the arms just dropped down to his side. Also, the wings were articulated so they could spread out. The Vulture also came with a little yellow gun in a holster and when his legs were squeezed together, his wings and arms would go up. Most of these figures are quite readily available on secondary sites such as eBay, and as a result, they don't hold a high value. However, they are very collectible and easy to find mint on the car. This would make them an excellent addition to anyone's Spider-Man collection. Price-wise, Spider-Man Parachute goes for between $15 to $20 mint on the card. Loose, it goes for anywhere from $5 to $10. Peter Parker sells for between $20 to $30 mint on the card. And Loose, he goes for between $5 to $10. Alien Spidey goes for between $10 to $12 mint on the card and two to five dollars loose. One of the most expensive figures on the secondary market is Kingpin. This is probably due to his bulkiness, making him difficult to send on mail order. And also it limited the number of Kingpins that could be displayed in the shop. Mint on the card, he sells for between 20 to 30 dollars and loose between five to 10 dollars. Craven goes for reasonable prices also. This is probably because the figure was one of the most accurate to the cartoon series. Mint in the cart, he goes for between $10 to $20, and loose for between $2 to $15. Lizard goes for very reasonable prices for the character. Mint on the cart, he sells for between $10 to $25, and loose the loose figure holds very good value also, which is surprising, and loose sells for between $10 to $12. The last one is Vulture. Vulture mint on the card sells for between $15 to $20, and loose for between $10 to $15. Please note that all the prices quoted in this video are not offers or solicitations to buy them, but are for information only. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe below. Click the bell icon to be informed of all my future videos and smash that like button. Don't forget to also download your free Spider-Man action figure collector's guide and comment below 
to let me know which of these figures you have and which your favourite is. OK, thanks very much for watching. Until next time, bye for now. ActionFigureResource.com Yesterday's Toys, Today's Treasures.